Hello there, it's Go Ahead Senior One Hurling Final Week, Ballyboden St. Enders and Nafina preparing to meet in the decider this Sunday afternoon at Parnell Park. Nafina eyeing a first ever senior hurling title, Ballyboden St. Enders looking for an eighth and a first since 2018. We're going to be looking ahead to the game shortly with Joe Fortune and Oisin Langan. We'll be hearing as well from Nafina and Bowden about the great work going on at their clubs ahead of the Go Ahead Senior One Hurling Final. It's Nafina versus Bally Bowden St. Dennis. It's final weekend in the Go Ahead Dublin Senior One Hurling Championship 2023. In the red corner, we have Nafina looking for their first ever Dublin Senior Hurling title. They have reached the last two finals, losing heartbreakingly on both occasions. This year they mean business, and with back-to-back -back wins over Kilmichael Croaks and Luke and Sarsfields, their tails are up heading into this final. In the blue corner it's a club who is steeped in Dublin hurling history, Ballyboden St Enders. Bowden are coming into this final off back-to-back -back wins over Kula and St. Vincent's, with the last one being a dramatic finale in Parnell Park. Nafina are hoping it's third time lucky and that they can win their first ever Dublin Hurling Championship. While for Bowden, they are looking to reclaim the Dublin Hurling throne for the first time since 2018. It all goes down this weekend. Get your tickets now on DublinGAA.ie. Okay, delighted to be joined now by Joe Fortune and Oisin Langan to look ahead to Sunday's Go Ahead Senior One Hurling Final. It's Bally Bowden St. Dendez versus Nafina. We'll look ahead to that in a moment, Joe. Uh, but first of all, what's your assessment been of the, of the season overall heading into the county final? Yeah, I think when it came to semi finals, uh, Derek, like any of the four teams could have won it. Uh, we were in a situation, I suppose, where you had like four really top teams that were all capable of winning it. Um, I suppose the big thing for me is coming out of the semi-finals. Like you, you'd so many different stories and permutations that might have happened. From like Croaks were obviously missing Ronan and and Alex had had just been like really struggling with injuries all year. Then we were missing Young Butler as a full back from last year as well, and and Brian Sheehy had only come back in. You know they were probably perceived to be everybody's favourites going into the semi-finals, but or into the quarterfinals, and then like Nafina put in a, a massive result. Luke and I, I suppose the big to answer your question overall, I think the championship has been exciting, but the structure of it is something that still probably needs to be looked at as well from the point of view that like ten makes it very competitive, but the bye week I think is is a stumbling block at times for 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 certain teams as well on the basis that you could go four or five weeks without a game and um like there's there, there's an awful lot of work going in. I suppose outside of that ten as well, Derek, with, with clubs like you know, with Craig trying to get back again, Brogues, Castle Knock, Fogs, Whitehall, Jude's are all putting in a massive effort, and you'd wonder could it did the twelve work? Could two groups of six work? It was perceived that it wasn't working, and to make it more competitive, we went to ten. But there were a couple of games where standard wise as well, it, you know, it, it wasn't what championship fair we'll say, and it was only when we really got into the to, the game just before that myself and Oshim were covering just before the quarterfinals that there was a real sense of life in it. But what's really exciting about this weekend is that we're going to have new county champions, be it Valley Bowden or Nafina. But overall, like there were days where I'm sure when you look at the whole idea of where the championship is, is, is the bye week working or is that, is that, is that something that, that needs to be looked at again? But for, for, for the two clubs that are going into Sunday's final, they won't, they won't really mind about, about format. And like, we have a really exciting Sunday ahead. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Oshin, uh, Joe mentioned there the Chemical Croaks defeat in the quarterfinal against uh, Nafina. I guess going into the campaign, Croaks would have been the favourites for the championship, and rightly so, going for the three in a row. Obviously, both in both in football and in hurling, so impressive uh, from a different point of view over the last few years. Their defeat in the quarterfinal, a big surprise from the point of view of them losing a game, not so much that they lost to Nafina, who are obviously have been pushing them so close over the past uh, number of years, but certainly opened things up from a championship point of view in terms of uh, giving others uh, a little bit of hope that they can uh, go on and win the thing, obviously. A surprise in the sense that they are the two in a row winners and people expect them to go on and maybe do it again. But Joe's already mentioned the players they were missing. 
and the fact that they came up against a very good team, like nothing could be taken from Nafina. They were the best team on the day. And I don't think anyone from Crooks grumbled about that. And even with the injuries they had and losing Alex so early in the game and they did other injury issues as well, they could over it. But so did Nafina. Like Nafina have had injury issues this season, including missing their, their, their marksman from the very start. And they've got on with it and they've dealt with it. Um, so it, like... It, it, I suppose people from the outside might look and say, well, it's a surprise that the champions went out in the quarterfinals. But when you really forensically examine it, it's not that much of a surprise. It wouldn't have been a surprise if they won it either. It was a game they could have won, but the Fiend is a better team on the day. Joe has talked about structures there. I do like even numbers in groups. Um, I understand why the numbers were cut, but I, I, you know, I do think a return to maybe even numbered groups so there's no uh, bye weekend would be a good thing. And interesting as well, Derek, that the two group winners maybe kind of suffered for winning the group in a sense that while Vincent's were the, the butt of a post or the width of a post from, from getting through, ultimately they won their group and they're out. And Lucan, they won their group and they're out. Um, regards the championship itself and the quality and the excitement, it's built up as it has gone along. I mean, I like um, you know the, the, the do or die days, the quarterfinals, the semifinals, the knockout days. Uh, but to get those days, you have to have the round robin and while there's not as much jeopardy, it's still good. It's still enjoyable. Took a little bit of time maybe to get going uh, this season. But when it got going, it was good. And hopefully we'll have an exciting conclusion on Sunday afternoon. And I'm glad as well, much as I'd love to be doing the game for Dubs TV, I'm glad as well that it will be on the biggest stage possible uh, being shown by RTE television. Yeah, exactly. 425 throw in on Sunday live on RTE if you can't make it to the game here in Parnell Park. I guess, Joe, you've, you, uh, you're you both yourself and Oshin have referenced that the six week or the five or six week uh, gap. And that kind of maybe is mo mostly in reference to Luke and Sarsfields, who were so impressive uh, in the early part of the campaign, beating Croaks in the first uh, game of the whole championship out in O'Toole Park, uh, winning all four games in their group. Uh, looking like they really had a chance here to go on and, and win the thing. They had a six-week break because their because their bye week turned out to be the last round of games. Obviously, they didn't have a quarterfinal, so straight into a semi-final. And they were 9-1 down, I think, after about 20, 25 minutes, 20 minutes or so of that semi-final. That really, I guess, cost them in the end. You probably would put it down, and certainly I'm sure Luke would put it down to the fact that they hadn't had a, a competitive game in six weeks. Overall, how impressed were you, I guess, by Luke and Sarso this year and St. Vincent's as well, who, uh, again, many people may, may not have predicted to get to, to top the group and get into a semi-final. How impressed were you by both of those teams? Yeah, look, very impressed. And I suppose the irony is, even going back to something that Oshin spoke about a couple of minutes ago, I think it happened, it permeated its way down into that, into this, into Senior 2 as well, where like Borog and Bowden came out top of their groups as well, Derek, and didn't make the final. And going back to what Oshin said, like it, it's it's a case where you really have to, as a manager and as a as a management team, you really have to time your run. I'm not sure whether becoming top of the group was was of any benefit to the to the four teams, senior one or senior two, in in the long term that they didn't make, make the final. Going back to Lucan, look, Lucan have had a great year with, with with Charlie involved as well. They were very very impressive starting out. You know, the massive win over Crooks and all of their games they seem to be building, 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 and then there came that 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 six week gap and. Obviously, Chris came back from, from his travels um, for a while as well, and, and Kieran Dowling and stuff hadn't been playing um, for whatever reason over the couple of weeks. And look, I, I said this to Oshin in jest at times as well, when, when, we, when we're lucky enough to do the, the commentary in Parnell Park, so something I really enjoyed this year. But you can play all the challenge matches and all the games that you want um, in the context of getting ready for, for a real cutthroat championship. And it doesn't really, it, it showed that Nafina had been through a serious battle to go, whatever, eight, nine points to one up. You know, Luke and Ward in that championship pace, and that's not nothing to do with it, with except just the gap that was there. And you know, it's something that may need to be looked at going forward. Vincent's for me, like this year, like from a defensive point of view, were really, really impressive. Like on, on a number of occasions, I mentioned how impressed I was by their collectiveness, their their tackling, their intensity. Was look, it it comes down, I suppose, to the man that's on the sideline with them as well, on the basis that you could see that that spirit of Pat Gilroy in that Vincent's team this year, but. They didn't have, I think they were missing a forward or two to really go at and to read. Now, again, look, they were, they were the width of a post or a Conor Donahue save away from getting to a final. I think they'll be a little bit disappointed on the basis that they were in a semi final in 18 and in, in 20 as well. And possibly after that, um, Bally Bowden have, have come across Vincent's a number of times in those semi finals. 
And I'd, I'd imagine they'll be disappointed because they put a serious year in. Both of those teams, like myself and Oshin would have commented on, were capable of getting to a county final and possibly winning it as well. So, like, really impressed with what Vincent's have done with Pat. Um, Lucan as well looked like really they want to make a massive charge towards towards winning a county title this year. And just unfortunately, um, they were they just weren't ready for that championship pace when it came to initial stages. And, and nearly got back into it. And like they had some really good performances, missed a couple of frees earlier on in the game as well that might have settled them. But um, overall, I think if you look back over the whole championship um, and you kind of bring your notes together on, you know, Ballyboden and, and Nafina deserve to be there on the basis that you'll always... Like they've put in massive performances. Nafina have taken care of, you know, some really big teams along the way as well as at Valley Bowden. They've met in the in the group stages. Um and I think we're in for a cracking final on Sunday. A team, I suppose, if you look at it, a team that has been astronomically successful within Dublin hurling circles in Valley Bowden. They've won so many count, county titles over the last ten to fifteen years. Um and a team that's suffered heartbreak over the last two years with Nafina. You know they've had massive underage success, and now you've got the two of them going head to head in in a county final this Sunday. Yeah, big time. I guess focusing now on on those two, the two teams, the two finalists. Um, Oshin, we mentioned already, Donald Burr um, to start off with. Uh, Nafina suffered a, a what should have been probably a killer blow at the start of the campaign in in losing him for the whole championship. Um, they lost their first game then to St Vincent's somewhat meekly from their point of view in, in the first round as well. You know, how impressed how impressed are you by the fact that they're even here in the county final this year, considering the blow that it is to lose a player of the calibre of Donald Burke so early on? And you you knew as soon as he hit the ground that day against Clare that, that it was a pretty serious injury and it was a big blow that day for Dublin. Granted, they probably would have lost anyway. And again, I'll go back to the fact that Carlo had pushed them hard the week before and I think it caught up with them against Clare. And immediately I thought to myself, whoa, that's a big loss for Nafina. But they've they've coped with that loss. Now, are they as good a team without Burke? Of course they're not. No team would be. Um, but you look at the likes of the Currys who stepped up, Baxter stepped up, AJ Murphy has stepped up. He's had a fine year. Um, he's been one of the players of the championship so far. Uh, Rushy at the back has come back in. And look, Liam Rush always looks composed. He's one of those players, even if he a whole team around him, he'd still somehow find room. Uh, Barrett has been decent. Uh, Connor McHugh was missing the last day as far as I can remember. Whether he's back for the final or not, I don't know, but he'd be a big, big boost to Nafina if he, if he could come back. The great thing about the, the, the um, group stages, and, and, and we've talked about maybe the negatives of the structure, but the positives is that you can kind of ease your way into the championship is probably the wrong uh, term to use, but you can play your way into the championship and you can maybe go deep into your squad and get that as game time. And Nafina have had to do that. And of course, as well, one thing I do like about this current championship um, structure is you know what's coming. And teams and managers and fans and everyone can plan around because the structures and the, the fixtures are, are are locked in stone. And of course, fixtures might get pulled because of weather or whatever. No one can help that. But but it's one thing that, that I do like that managers are able to plan. And Nafina looked like they've planned it exactly right. And Look, so many players this year have stepped up and it would have been very easy over the last couple of years for Nafina to bow the head and say, this is never going to happen for us and to, to not pick themselves up off the ground in the last two years, given the blows that they've had of losing county finals, particularly the way they lost the first one. But they have done that and they deserve so much credit for that. Will they take any consolation from that if they don't win this time around? Like I, I said it at the end of the match, getting to three county finals is in itself a great achievement. But I imagine, and while I can't speak for them, I would imagine if you said to any of the Nafina players this week, um, you know, well done on getting to three county finals, they would say, well, it only matters if you win. Like, it's only a great achievement if we can at least win one of them. And that's probably how they're thinking. I mean, these are elite sports people. They they play to win at underage levels and development levels. It's all about the words I just used their development and building up a bond and becoming a team and learning the skills. Whereas at this level, it's all about winning. And they've given their fans a great journey and they'll have a great day on uh, Sunday. Uh, but ultimately to the players, I imagine it's all about getting their hands on the title. And while you can say they deserve it, I'm going to quote um, the unforgiven Gene Hackman, deserved ain't got nothing to do with it. You have to take it. But they're in a good place to take it. And it's, it's a tough one to call. 
Yeah, Joe, who have you been impressed by this year from an Athena point of view? And again, replacing the, a player of, of Donald's calibre, who do you feel has stepped up to the plate from an attacking point of view, but overall, from a, I guess, from a leadership point of view in the team and the, the leadership that Donald brings, who do you feel has uh, stepped up to the plate in that regard? Yeah, like, like let's not be under any illusion. Like Donald Burke is one of the top forwards in the country, not just in Dublin. Like, like he's an all-star nominee on a number of occasions. He's one of the finest forwards that that Dublin have ever produced. And it's testament to the work that goes on in the background and the production of players that Nafina have that they've got back to this um, county final again without him. We, Ushi, myself and Ushi were there, I think it was the quarter final. And you wouldn't think the lad was injured because he ran up and down the line and played every single ball with, with the Nafina lads. And they seemed like a very tight group. I've, I've been impressed with Nafina overall. I think the, the general sense of where they've come from for the last two years, it's very hard to lose two county finals. I, I lost one in 20 against Kula with Valley Bowden and it is it, it hurts and it's a sign and testament of the character that's in the dressing room and in the management to get them back there again. Look, AJ's had a super year, I agree 100% with, with Oshin. A, a really tough year from a personal point of view, um, losing his sister early in the year and it's a sign of the kind of family that he comes from as well, like how that guy has lifted himself back up and been like the main forward more or less you could say apart from the two the two Currys. He's, he's had a super year and, and, I, and I hope he gets an opportunity in, in blue over the coming months as well once the, the FINA campaign is done. I've been really impressed. Oshin has heard me a number of times talking with the two Burks at the back. I think the two Burks are, are, are serious men. They've been very aggressive. Um, you know, they don't give away many frees. Again, I think there's, there's a platform there for them to go forward and, and represent Dublin again at, at, in a senior capacity too. Overall, I, I, you have to, people underestimate the influence that Liam Rush can have to a team. I know he, he transferred a couple of years ago into Nafina. Oshin is 100% right. He looks calm on the ball all the time. He's somebody who has really added that solidity to their back. When he came back into into contention after being away traveling, he just like he really just like he just he just he's somebody who I, I can't speak highly enough in regards to what he's done at, at, a, at a Dublin underage level and Dublin senior level. And he's really gelled that back unit together alongside somebody who I think in the middle of the field gets very very few accolades. But Young Feeney in the middle of the field, I think, does an awful lot of work, an awful lot of hard work. He, his tackle count, his breaking ball, it's, it's just, it's phenomenal what he gets through. And I think as it, look, look you have to look inside as well at their number one. John O'Tracy is, is one of the top keepers in the county. He's he, he's somebody who, you know, he he's, he bleeds the colours of Nafina. He's, he's such a proud Nafina man. And I, I think from one up to the guys they've brought in, they've allowed Baxter to be a sub this year. Not allowed, but he's, he's somebody who consistently came up with goals over the last couple of years. And he's added a massive amount when he's come in. Uh, young Murphy as well as a sub coming in has been huge for them. So I, I think they're in a good place. I think Nafina are in a good place and it's it's all to play for this Sunday. But on a general basis, to answer the question, Derek, overall from the line, from what they've been trying to do and the, the ethos that they're bringing to, from the club as well is, is, is hugely commendable. But doesn't that tell you an awful lot about Nafina this season? That as soon as I stopped talking and you jumped in, I thought about all the players I hadn't mentioned. Brian Ryan is another one. Um, like so Tierney, many... Tierney is a forward machine as well has yeah. been for exactly like I can't think of one player that's been on the pitch for Nafina either a starter or a sub who hasn't done their job this season like I couldn't like if you asked me right well where's the weak link there I I'd struggle to tell you because I, I don't I haven't seen one yet and yes they've lost a game or whatever but that was in the group stages you know you do what you do it's all about getting to the final and you can ball yeah. the clubs in the world about you know getting to knockout stages and playing well and whinging about being unlucky but they've got to the final and they've got their merit because everyone has chipped in, like all of yeah, their squad. Their character, I think, we, we've mentioned a few times as well, their, their character is a little bit different this year as well. They're, they just seem to be a little bit more aggressive or, you know... For, they're meaner, Joe, aren't they? I mean, that as a compliment. Yeah, and they are. And they're, they're just, they're more physical. Like, their back six is as tight as, as, as what it is in any county. And, you know, their midfield is, is, is very, very, very mobile. And when, when the two Currys are on form and AJ is hitting form, and this is without Donald as well, and we haven't mentioned Shane Barrett. Like, Shane Barrett had a phenomenal underage career with Dublin. Captain Dublin to a minor Leinster Championship and to an under-21 Leinster Championship as well. And he's been so unlucky over the last couple of years with injury. But they've got on with it. They kept going and they've... they've, they've and look, I know we obviously haven't spoken about, about, about Billy Bowden yet, but there's very few hurling people in Dublin that would, you know, that would take like Billy Bowden for this week, Will, but that would, would, would not want to see them at some stage lift uh, a county title. But you don't get, these county titles are, are not easily won and you don't get it because 
do you know, you've put in a brave performance or you've got a really good team that are working really hard. You put it in, you get your, your medal and your trophy when you put in a performance on the biggest day of a Dublin hurling calendar. And that's what Nafina have to do this Sunday. Um, from the point of view of, it's been a Nafina love-in for the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Um, so we better talk about Bowden a small bit here. Um, they have been motoring along pretty nicely themselves this year. Obviously the defeat to Nafina aside, which is in the last group game, they'd already qualified for the um, for, for the knockout stages, obviously they wanted to. They were looking to win the game to to go straight to the semi-finals. Um, but they have been motoring along quite nicely this year, Oshin. How, how have you been impressed by them? They kind of seem to have, um, yeah, probably been, probably been the most consistent team this year. Considering Nafina had that small struggle at the start, losing to St Vincent's, Bowden seem to have been the most consistent team maybe this year. Outside of that, maybe the uh, second half against Saint, against uh, Nafina in the group stages. Yeah, still probably to play their best stuff, which is possibly a good thing going into a final. What I like about Bowden, what I've always liked about Bowden, uh, watching them closely in the championship over the last couple of years and watching from afar uh, before that, was their work rate and their ethic. And the thing is as well, they have ball winners. And obviously in Ryan, they have someone who can nail freeze. And freeze, at the, well, freeze are important at all times of the year. But at this time of the year, freeze are unbelievably important. And he can, he can nail them all. Um, and they've got a bit of speed in there as well. So they've got a really, really nice mix. And also that dash of experience, even though it's been a bit of a wait for them, but they have players in there who know how to win. They know what it is to win. And I don't think you can underplay that. Um, so it's, it's an interesting kind of mix this weekend of a team who have been so close and who are unbelievably hungry coming up against a team who have done it before, but who have had a bit of a gap and you could argue are equally as hungry. Um, but just Bally Bowden still to hit top form, but that's that's not an insult. If anything, that's a compliment. Uh, will they hit top form this Sunday? It's possible. And the experience they have around them as well, like it's like they have people who obviously understand it in their management setup as well. So I think um yeah, I think it's if styles make fights, this could be this could be a good game. Yeah, Joe, from a Bowden point of view, who's impressed you? Plenty of experience in the side. You would have worked alongside a lot of them when you were a uh, Bowden manager, but a good few uh, new faces in the, in the setup as well this year as well. Uh, who, who's impressed you this year from a Bowden point of view? I think, that, look, the one thing about Bally Bowden, uh, Derek, as well, is that like Bowden, when it gets to those kind of real clutch moments, know how to win. Is it, look, the, the players that they have, they've, they've all impressed me. I, I agree 100% with what Ocean has said. They haven't hit... You know, they haven't hit 100% max yet. And they've been missing a couple of players through injury as well. Like Connell only came back. Keeney only came in the last day for, for maybe the last 10 or 15 minutes. Has had some issues over the year with, with injury. But you look through the spine of their team and in, in years to come, if you analyse Dublin hurling, people will talk about the influence that Paul Ryan and Shane Durkin and Simon Lambert, you know, Niall McMorrow had on a Dublin senior hurling perspective. But also from a club perspective, what they've won and what they've had the ability... like. The credit is really due to these players. Like I think there's nine starting or nine started the semi-final um, in 2018. And five years later, those lads still look as good and as strong and as fit. And that, that's testament to those, the players, the club, their families. It's, it's, it's so impressive to get back to that county final again. But look, David Curtin was midfielder for me or wing forward for me in, in 2018. He's a real spiritual leader. He's a hugely, hugely impressive guy in the, in the dressing room. He's somebody who will definitely drive and get every last percent out of that out of that group. But from Conor Dunne, who's come in this year, really delighted to see him the last day. Made a really important save, stroke post at, on the on the last play um, for that Tom O'Connolly um, penalty. Like he's taken over from Gary Maguire, from Finn McGarry. They've put some young lads in. You know, Paddy Dunleavy was in a full back. They've they've introduced Pierce Christie, you know, Kevin Desmond, Luke McDwyer. But all those players, Derek, were around in 2018 as well. They learned their trade. Like Bowden just didn't parachute these young lads in. Aidan Mellett and Luke Corkin has ha have had time with, with the Dublin senior panel uh, as well. You know, James Madden did a phenomenal job the last day and is, in my opinion, again, somebody who's one of the best man markers in, in Dublin. And you, you keep going through the names and these lads have county medals. You know, some of them were part of the five that five in a row team. Moore won county title in, in 2013. Again, like I said, most of that panel would have won a, a medal in, in some capacity in 2018 and were in the final in 2020. And that's before you introduce the last day when Paul Ryan had to go off. I agree with Oshin, he's a 99% free taker. 
he worked really hard, I felt, the last day. And when he ran out of gas, they had somebody like Timmy Hammersley to bring in who nailed every one of his frees as well in that kind of clutch moment. So they have proven winners. They have a team. They have a backroom team as well. And don't underestimate the strength of their backroom team. Like Stephen Heine, David Curtin, like Eamon O'Reilly's involved this year as well. He'll bring a massive amount from a, from a player's welfare point of view as well and get inside players' heads. You know, they've also got Brian O'Regan as well, who's been involved with, with um, you know, with the Dublin senior footballers. So they have a massive amount of experience on the line and they also have a massive amount of experience on the pitch. And the big thing for them, like you look onto the pitch now at the moment, and I just commented on this the other evening where in 2018, the players won their games and, you know, were greeted by their parents. And myself and Oshin look down now and you see, you know, Simo's kids come down onto the field, or kid comes down to the field, Shane Durkin's kids, Paul Ryan's kids. And is this the the real last dance for this group of players? It was said to me in 2018 before I went out there that they were finished and here they are back in, a, in another county final as well. But in a, in a different context, this could be the real last dance for this group. And they know how to win and... They will give, I've no doubt, they'll give absolutely every every bit of their bodies on, on for Ballyboden on Sunday. Joel, it's a, a conundrum for David Curtin, isn't it? Who does he put Madden on? Because the Fina have any number of guys that you'd want to man mark and put one of the best man markers I, in the county. I thought, country. About, this, I, I thought about this during the week, you know, Like, And this is something that might, and it might be just way off the mark, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Donald Burke on Sunday. I wouldn't be surprised if he's, if he's anywhere near the end you of the You have to week, start him, do you? Like if he's available, I I don't know. I I, I leave that to to Neil and to Bertie. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't no, but, I don't but what I mean is, is if you're introducing a guy who's who, yeah. who hasn't played games, who you're not exactly he sure down, where he is, but sure you have to start him rather than putting him on, and then he could come off three minutes later. And I hope that's not the case. I would love to see. Dublin well, I suppose Bert. that's what happened with Dublin, Oshin. Really, like he he yeah. was injured. He he had an injury against Carlo, where there were really pushed to the pin or the collar that day before they took off in kind of the 52nd or 53rd minute. Or, you know, but for 50 minutes, Carlo were there, thereabouts. And then Berkey did have an injury going into the Clare match. Was it, it wasn't the same injury and then had a really significant injury after a few minutes against Clare. And that, that took the life out of Dublin as well. So to answer the question, maybe he's better coming in if he's available on the basis that, you, you know, you don't you. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him. And when when Bally Bowden played um, Nafina in the semi final in 2020, James Madden marked Donald Burke um, and did a and did a fine job on him as well. If not, I'd imagine he's going to be on AJ. Like AJ has been exceptional um, inside. And then again, do you know the two? Like, do you go with Sean Curry or Colin Curry? Do you know? Do you go with Shane Barrett? Does does James Madden match up physically more with Shane Barrett? Who? Yeah. When, he, when Shane Barrett wins that ball in the wing forward position or in the half forward line, he goes directly towards that goal. And they're going to have to make sure, Bally Bowden are going to have to make sure that they don't concede early goals because AJ, the two Currys, Barrett, are all capable of getting of getting a goal. And, and I'm sure that's something that, that David Curtin... But I wouldn't be surprised to see Donald Burke if he's anywhere near, because of how much, I suppose, he... He loves Nafina and he loves the club. If he's near Max yet in regards to getting back from his rehab, I wouldn't be surprised to see him on Sunday. At given given the pace that um, Nafina have from the Ballyboden point of view, do you try and mark that collectively, or do you try and mark that one on one? Because uh, Derek McGrath of Waterford, what a surprise! They're bringing up a Waterford person said the one thing you cannot mark is pace, and it's the hardest thing to plan for. Yeah, it's the hardest thing to plan for, and 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 like Ballyboden are consistently questioned about you know older legs and pace, and will they be able for you know, the, the, the new books coming up. But I just think they find a way, um, or she, I, I don't know whether it's strategic or it's planning in a dress room, but the Shane Durkins and Simon Lamberts of, of this world, you know, they're not slow. Yeah. And while they are getting old, they, they're still, from what I've seen this year of them as well, they're still capable. They brought in young Jack Lambert has done really well wing back as well, um, Simo's yeah. brother. He, he's added physicality. I thought he was really good in, in the clutch moments um, in the semi-final, really strong. And he gets forward as well, doesn't he? Like oh, he does, that, that Bally Bowden half-back line, every great team needs a great half-back line. You look at that court team of the mid-2000s or early 2000s, uh, Gardner, O'Halpy and Curran. Look at the, the, great, the great green wall, the giant green wall, whatever you want to call it, with Limerick now, even missing Declan Hannon, they had that great half-back line. And Bally Bowden have that great half-back line. And it's it's all oh, capable of scoring as well, Oshin. And like you know, and Jack Lambert's a former underage keeper for for Dublin. You know, he's a he's a monster, monster striking them. You go back to even when Dublin were really successful under Dalo, and you know, you had Mikey Carton and 
you know, Peter Kelly and Johnny McCaffrey, all capable in around that area as well of, of scoring Rushy as well when he was when he was at six. So I think you're right. The platform from from five, six, and seven for Bowden is huge, and and I'm sure some, that's something as well that 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 Nafina will will have looked at and will have spoken about to, to not allow them. But it's very rare anymore when you have where you have three inside. So the likelihood is will Shawnee McDonald and and Luke Corpin stay inside, allowing Paddy Dunleavy get up the pitch. Do you know, they, they, Nafina wants space. You've commented a number of times on how the type of ball that, that, that goes into AJ or into, into Sean or Colin when they're inside, it needs to be at that diagonal in order to give them a chance because physically they're not, they're not six foot or, or, or over that. They need an opportunity and a, and a chance to win a ball at a diagonal to take the defender on. And when they win the ball, there's pace there. But like Lambert is brilliant, brilliant. One of the top people, I think, in the county still at covering back that six and, and protecting the tree and the D inside. So it's 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 made for a massive, a massively interesting battle on, on Sunday. Yeah, no, Sheen, from a Bowden point of view, is is the key for them in this uh, in this final to try and close off the space that the Nafina forwards find inside, either stopping ball from getting into them in the first place or closing off the space for them to really run at the Bowden defence. Is that really key for them in terms of trying to? trying to negate the Nafina attack and winning this game? Uh, no, because I think they can both, and I, I, I know it sounds like I'm about to say this could be a Derek game. This is not what I'm saying, but they can both shut each other down and limit the scores. Like you're only, And you're only going to limit it so much on either side. Like, Look at it this way, Derek. Like You're not going to stop Ryan from scoring. You have Timmy Hammersley to come in or possibly start. Then you have Niall McMorrow, who can, even if he isn't scoring, we saw it the last day, can come deep and affect things and, and pick a pass through the eye of a needle. But Nafina have all the same attributes. So, you know, it, it, it could be just a case of, well, you you can limit them to a certain amount, Nafina and Bowden and Bowden and Nafina, but both teams are going to get scores. Um, so it could come down to accuracy from freeze, maybe something like that, and discipline, keeping your discipline, not getting someone sent off, not having someone walking a tightrope, not having someone getting a yellow card within the first three minutes and then having to really watch themselves. And if they do that, get that yellow card, then both like, look at Mellet running through for Bally Bowden. If you're on a yellow card, the last thing you want is Mellet running at you, you know, or McDwyer running at you or McMorrow tur- tr- turning you anywhere near goal or even far away from it. So they, they, um, they both have incredibly effective um, attacks. Joe, um, we, we've mentioned already maybe the, uh, the the lean rush factor and maybe the experience that he brings. You, you, you know, you were there at Bally Bowden t- in, in, back in 2018. They've won county finals. This group of players we've spoken already have won a number of county finals. A lot of them uh, have won several of them at this stage of their, of their careers. Um, bring in, obviously, Nafina haven't been able to get over the line, but bring in someone in like, like Liam Rush. Obviously, he was away for most of the uh, championship. He only came back in towards, I think, the latter stages of the group uh, stages. How important will that be? Uh, and even just in his presence and the experience he brings, let alone the quality he has, but the experience he brings to that setup to maybe calm things down if they need to be calmed down or to you know, get their heads together if, if needs be, especially if they don't have a player of the leadership qualities of Donald Burke on the pitch as well. Yeah, I think it's probably going back to your questions. It's, it's probably too, too, too edged on the basis that like Liam will be great to calm things down when it's needed, but he, he'll also be great to light that fire when it's needed as well. Like There's no better man to to light a fire underneath fellas if they're, if they're not working hard enough in, in, in the defence. But again, like Liam, if he plays at six on on Sunday, will have a fair battle on his hands if Niall McMorrow's at 11 because McMorrow's not going to sit on him, um, you know, like the proverbial 11 and and have that that, that physical battle with him. Niall McMorrow will, will buzz off him all day. And I still think Niall McMorrow, and I've, and I've said it on a number of occasions, like Niall McMorrow is the, the, the linchpin of that Ballyboden team in, along with Simo as well. He's... He's the creator of so much up front. He, he's somebody who you know can, can really, really impact the game. His and you talk about pace. Like we, we watched a couple of games there where McMorrow was you know you know taking on 21, 22 year olds and leaving them for dead. He still has that burst of pace. His wrists, you know, his wrists are just sublime. He, he's well, well capable of, of doing the magic stuff as, along with the hard stuff as well. And um, going back to Rushy, like Rushy has been huge, and, and it's something that I that I that I was conscious of making sure that I mentioned. Rushy has been absolutely huge to that Nafina team for his presence, for his ability to win ball. And like what Ushin said earlier, Derek, for his ability to stay calm in those really big moments. And going back to the first final that Nafina were so close to winning against Kilmacud, like he was exceptional that day. And you know, at the, at the time I was I, I was being called to 
to, to, to mention man of the match and you were, you were talking about between the Curries and Rush before Hayes got the, the goal at the very, very end to, to equalise it. But he's been, he's been such a big part. And, and again, nobody, for, for the people who, you, if you were to pick a team that, that's done sometimes that players that have been so unlucky not to win county titles and you could go through so many of the greats like you know for that Lucan had like Johnny and, and, and PK and stuff like nobody would begrudge Liam Rush uh, a senior county medal but he's going to have to earn it and he, he's he's going to have a big battle on his hands will Bally Bowden go physically with Liam Rush to match him or will they sit somebody off him to try and you know to try and take him out of that centre because he is very good like Lambert as well covering back on the D in case Burke is under pressure with, with, with whoever's inside be it Kevin Desmond or Pierce Christie or, or some of the young lads that have come in as well. But yeah, hugely influential character in and out of the dressing room as well. So before we go to predictions, um, Joe, you've been in this position before as um, senior manager going into a county final back in 2018. Uh, I'm sure it's a hectic week. It's a bit of a mental week because there's so much going on in your head about different things that, that can happen. And obviously, uh, David Curtin, it's his first county final as a manager. Neil's had two. He's kind of seen what's, what county finals are about. What does go through your head this week and what, what is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday like in county final week? It's funny because in 2018, it was my first county type fight, fight final as well. And I remember asking uh, Keeney and, and Curtin and Gary Maguire to speak to the younger players collectively in the group just before we left it. I think it was the Tuesday night training session about, you know, what, the, and now the irony is David's in the, in the opposite side. He's the, he's the manager getting ready. Look, David Curtin's a calm individual. He's somebody who... He, he will have left, and he, everybody talks about this, but he won't have left a stone unturned. Eamon O'Reilly, a really calm guy around the camp as well. Like Piney has been colossal for Dublin over the years. You know, Brian O'Regan has been involved in, in really high games, you know, high pitch games over the last couple of years with Dublin football. They'll keep things very calm this week. You know, they'll, they'll get a little bit of work done. There would have been a little bit of bike to training, I'd imagine, either this evening or last night. And then the, the session on, on Thursday or Friday this week will be just nice and calm and naming the team and, and probably speaking as well about what it means to this group, Derek, because like the, the longevity of a group or the, the lifespan of a group will end at some stage and at some stage this group will come to an end for Valley Bowden and I'm sure he'll remind them that this is such, like you're 65 minutes away from creating history again as a club and and I'm sure Neil will, will, will probably be doing the reverses in, like Oshin said earlier on, he'll speak about the hurt and the possibly of the last, or maybe not even mention it, maybe not even speak about the last two years because that's consigned to history as well. But from Curtin's point of view, like he's an inspirational, I, I, I spent many days and mornings running, you know, the, the, the mountains of, of South County Dublin uh, with David Curtin when people, you know, would have said that he was finished and like he was always the top man who got to the top of the hill first and he'd speak to the players about what it meant to, to him and his family to be to be somebody who played for Dublin and, and played for Valley Bowden. So he's an inspirational kind of guy, um, somebody who I'd, I'd still be quite close with and, that's why when it comes to predictions in a few minutes, you're not getting any from me. <laughs> <laughs> I better start with Oshin then, had I? Because there might be a stun silence from yourself if I start with you. Uh, laying down the law pretty quickly, Joe. Uh, Oshin, we'll start with you then. Predictions, who's going to win it this weekend? Oh, it's a tough one. Um, very, very difficult to call. I think because they, from what I've seen so far, it's an evidence-based answer. And of course, you could end up with egg on your face on Sunday evening. Um, I think Nafina, um, but it's like that's guesswork. I do think whoever comes through, and it could just as easily be Bally Bowden, will have a right tilt off the AIB Leinster Club Championship, and it's a very open provincial championship. Uh, you know, you still have Bally Hell Shamrocks in there; they're playing all Lachlan Gales this weekend. They were written off earlier in the year. Uh, the winner of this place, the Westmead winner, that's not going to be easy. And Joe knows that better than anyone. Uh, Mount Leinster Rangers are going to play the winner from Kilkenny. They're back. And so it's a really tough open championship. Um, but I, I just, I have a feeling for Nafina. But then again, I thought Ireland would win the Rugby World Cup. So maybe this is a boost of confidence to, boast, boost of confidence to Bally Bowden. <laughs> They'll take it that way. Joe, we're going to have to get something off you at the very least. At least a draw. Give us something. Yeah, I'm just hoping for a really good game, Derek, to be honest. I'm not going to give, uh, like, at, at times, you go into it, like, I'm, I, I'm, I, I really love the, the whole cold commentary idea. It's something that I've really enjoyed over the last couple of years, and maybe at times I'm perceived to be pro Valley Bowden because I had a number of them in for, for the three years that I was there, and, you know, we we had reasonable success. I, I, I think an awful lot of the Nafina lads, too, a lot of them would have, at some stage, 
um, being under my stewardship with Dublin. So I'm not going to in any way make this about me or anything else except saying I'm hoping for a good game. I wish the two teams the best of luck. Um, and I, I just think when it comes down to it, it's going to be a real case of who wants this the most. And I know that's me, me sitting on the fence. But if Nafina can really galvanise that group on the hurt of the last two years, they're in with a significant chance. But Bally wouldn't know how to win. And that's that's the big sign. Can Nafina get up those steps? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd be fond of, of lads in both camps. So I'm going to go for a really good game and, um, and not give you any prediction on who's going to win it. That's very much sitting on the fence. It sounds like you're supporting the referee this weekend. Chris Mooney is your, is your man for this weekend. The referee thing as well, and I've mentioned this a few times, Derek, over the course of the, the time that we've been in, in Parnell Park this year. Like We're so lucky at the moment. For years in, in, in Dublin, one of the biggest criticisms was that the standard of refereeing wasn't what it should and could be. And when we got out of, um, for example, if you're involved with, with underage teams, you went down the country or you went out of the, the club campaign, you go, that the standard of refereeing jumped higher. Like We've got three of really top referees now, along with the young lads that are coming through as well, like Mark Ryan, but Chris Mooney and, and Sean Stack and you know Tom Gleason are at a really high level of refereeing now. I think this is, is this Chris's third final, maybe. He refereed the first one in, in 2018, the draw game against Kim McCudd. Um, he refereed the, the, the match that went to extra 21. time. Yeah, Nafina and Kim McCudd. Huge day for him as well and, and for his club and, and for family. But we're really lucky at the moment that we have really top class referees in, in, in Dublin. And it's something that was criticised for years. And you have to give fair play and testament to those guys as well that are involved on Sunday. Because, look, Chris will be in the middle and, you know, he's, he's a really good top class referee along with Sean and, and, and Tom and Mark and those lads as well. And, look, they're getting, he's getting a big opportunity on Sunday and he won't leave anything on, on, on any stone unturned in his preparation as well, I'm sure. So you're not giving us any prediction as your short answer, Joe. Uh, before you go, a quick look at the Go Ahead Senior 3 hurling final, Joe, if you don't mind. Rahini taking on Maeve Marno uh, in O'Toole Park on Saturday afternoon, 3.45. Rahini being very impressive in the uh, Senior 3 Championship this year. How do you see both sides getting on, first of all, in the uh, Senior 2 Championship next year? And how do you see this one going this weekend? Yeah, Rahini have been really impressive over the course of the year and, and they've got some really good underage players as well that have played really well over the course of the couple of years with the Dublin Miners and 20s. Um, Gary Delocri has done an amazing job with, with, with Nave Marno. They've come from intermediate um, straight into, into senior three, you know, into a, into, a, into a final. It's a huge thing for Port Marnock as well. Going back down to intermediate was, was probably, a, you know, I know the footballers have, have dropped down this year as well, but he's done an incredible job with, with Port Marnock to get them to that final. Again, these finals... And Oshin has mentioned this on commentary a number of times. The most important match in senior two and in senior three is the semi final because you want to get up that level. <clears throat> and both teams have done that. So I think I think Rohini will be perceived as favourites, but Marnock's had a really good year, and I wouldn't be surprised to, to see them win this one. Guys, thank you very much for uh, joining us today, looking ahead to the uh, finals this weekend, and uh, looking forward to seeing you on Sunday here in Parna Park as well. No problem. Okay, thank you to Joe and to Oshin. Now, last week we heard from Kimoko Croaks and from Bally Bowden St. Enders about the great work going on at their clubs as they continue to grow and develop and engage with their local communities. In a few minutes, we're going to be chatting to the Nafina chairman, Cormac Odunaku, about all things uh, Nafina. But first of all, let's take a look back at our chat last week with Bally Bowden St. Enders vice chair, John Ryan. Let's talk quickly about the uh, the work going on at the club from a coaching point of view because, uh, you know, Timmy yeah. Harris is there, Sean Og is there, Paddy's there, and they're doing great work in terms of, um, I guess, coaching the coaches, which is the big thing What in, in terms of what GPOs are kind of doing at the moment and, and, and coaching officers are doing at the moment is trying to improve coaching standards at the club uh, from from juvenile all the way up. Uh, tell me a little bit about the work that, that, that Sean Og and uh, Timmy and Paddy do in, in that regard. Yeah, well, the first thing I'd say, uh, Paddy O'Neill came on board uh, almost two years ago now, and Paddy brings with it a huge depth of knowledge in coaching. He has worked at the very highest level and continues to work at the very highest level, and we're very fortunate to have him on board. So he's brought numerous initiatives in, um, like we have uh, improved on our strength and conditioning team. 
Uh, we have, uh, as you said there, we have a new coaching team, which follows on from the great work that Brian O'Regan previously had done. That's Timmy and Sean Og. And there's a lot of initiatives there, and I just don't really have the time here to go through what they've done. Like even stuff like code of conduct has come in, and we all know how important that is, both for members, for the playing group, and that we we put in place a suitable protocol that we can all adhere to. And that work has carried on in the background and has been done. Okay, the red mist often comes down on the other occasion, and I suppose really we we have to try and um as best we can adhere to those codes other things that have happened as well we've had a total review as well of the protocols and the coaching procedures across all four codes the respective chairpersons pulled together various people and and put together i suppose a roadmap what they felt of where they wanted to go both from uh, uh, Ladies football, Camogie, Holland football. And out of that, you know, small committee groups have been formed and report back up to Timmy Poddy and his team and see how we can improve on all those areas. So that's work in progress and ongoing all the time. A few other initiatives which are very important. Obviously, we have uh, rebranded as well our uh, underage section, which we now call Bowden Oak. And we very recently started Bowden Spree, which is for our five-year-olds. And I'm sure that's quite interesting for something like 155 year olds down the pitch very recently. So I'm sure that was great fun managing those. I'm not so sure how much camogie or football or hurling was done, but anyway, they turned up and they're putting the Bowden colours on, I suppose. And they will be, I suppose, in who knows in future uh, years to come, uh, they could be wearing the county colours. We just don't know. So a huge lot of work has been done in the background and it's the type of work that never stops. And you can never take your eye off the ball. And uh, we're very fortunate to say to have a great team of people involved. Uh, you mentioned already, um, John, the, the kind of work going on. You know, it's not necessarily, obviously, we see the senior one teams out here in Parna Park and County Final Day, but there's obviously a lot of other work going on at the club uh, to make it, I guess, a community club. And that's, re- that's uh, very, very important. A huge amount of, uh, I know, if you're ever down in the club, there's plenty of um, uh, activity there, no matter what time of the day you're down there at and what uh, day of the week you're down there at as well. So maybe talk a little bit about the work going on in, in the club from the community point of view in terms of uh, other activities that take place at the club outside of uh, GA activities. I know, for example, there's a coffee shop down there and I've been down there on a Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock and the place is heaving. Uh, so the coffee shop and, and Bowden Bliss, the uh, ice cream shop there as well, bring a lot of activity to the club at all times. Yeah, just as you mentioned, uh, uh, the coffee shop tribe started during lockdown, actually, and provided a great uh, facility opportunity for the local community to come together uh, when we didn't really have an opportunity, which was in an outdoor, as you know, at the time we weren't allowed to group inside. So we had an outdoor facilities where people could easily keep their famous two meter distance at the time. So that was something and that has now continued on. And um it is all it's an integral part of the club as in its two club men actually run that shop um and then um, the board and bliss came online as well mick our bar manager brought that in as well so again there's a queue and i'm even told that we often get a phone call in advance to the club if there's a juvenile match on uh, the mammies of ladies have to ring up to know it's board and bliss open so the attraction <laughs> sometimes is more <laughs> the ice cream and maybe the coffee <laughs> the matches, the yeah. as well. but that's lovely that's nice and just part of it but there's a lot of other stuff going on as well like we have the we have drama as well going on. We have bingo going on. We have a walking group, and you know, uh, to honour quit over our shul or Haven of Wales. So there's a lot of good work going on at the Irish side as well. And we must thank people like Shamie O'Neill as well, who has driven that. Like you'll see now, even the sign we put up last night about two county finals, we've in- included uh, some Wales on that as well. And a lot of the signage now, are double signage around the club. Um, there's various meetings going on, just people can join a group if they want to improve their Gaelic. And, and that's all good and positive and Jamie is fabulous and, and passionate about it as well. And that comes across to all of us and forcing non goers almost like myself to be able to use a few fuckle at different occasions. And that's another part and excitement of uh, development that's going on behind the scenes. Yeah.
I look back there at some of last week's interview with Bally Bowden St. Enda's Vice Chairperson John Ryan. You can check out that full chat on last week's podcast. Bowden, of course, in the Go Ahead Senior won football final last weekend and the Senior won hurling final this weekend against uh, Nafina, of course. I'm delighted to be joined now uh, this week by Nafina, Chairman at Cormac O'Dunaku, to chat about the great work going on at Nafina ahead of a big, big week for the club, Cormac. Plenty of nerves and excitement, I'm sure, around the club at the moment ahead of uh, Sunday's game. Uh, absolutely, Derek. Uh, good meal, Margaret. And thanks to me for having us on. And thanks for everybody for the great coverage uh, for the important game coming up at the weekend and indeed the coverage of the games over the last few weeks. Um, massive excitement, Derek. Massive excitement here. Uh, we're absolutely delighted. And uh, it's funny around the camp, indeed, not only among the players, but also uh, around the whole club in general. Um, there's a great sense of privilege of uh, of, of achieving the, the goal of, of, of getting back to a a final uh, remarkably here since 1955 um right up until two years ago we never ever made it to a senior intercount uh, to a, a, our, our senior club final in dublin so um or our hurling final so um so it's remarkable that we, we've made it back here for three years in a row so uh we're, we're we're really excited about it looking forward to it um and certainly looking forward to uh to facing the the challenge of of the great team of bally bowden on sunday yeah, absolutely. And obviously the senior hurlers are in are in action this Sunday, but it's been a pretty good couple of years from the club from a point of view of, uh, you know, you've, you've done quite well on the pitch. Senior finals uh, in all four codes over the last couple of years. The hurlers obviously last year, the footballers last year as well. Uh, Camogie and the ladies footballers were, were in the uh, final this year as well. Obviously the results haven't gone the way you wanted them to go, but getting to finals in all four codes, I guess, shows the, the incredible strength that you have at the club at the moment uh, on the pitch. Yeah, uh, we're remarkably privileged to have a, a wonderful, wonderful bunch of, of players playing at our senior level right at the moment, right across all of our codes, as you referenced in our, our, our senior footballers, our senior hurlers, our senior camogues, and our lady footballers, along indeed with our handballers and our and our, our rounders participants too. Um, but but you know their arrival um, hasn't uh, hasn't hasn't come today nor yesterday. Um, their really uh, their skill, their dedication, and their commitment to the club. And to to all codes has a result been a result of the fruits of the labour of uh, many many thousands of hours of work of people committed, um, all the way since 1955, and uh, it's remarkable. We're we're particularly proud coming into this Sunday that you know of our panel of players coming in. Over 30 of our players will have come all the way from nursery here on a Saturday morning right through to the privilege of playing in uh, in our county final this Sunday in Parnell Park. Good stuff. We're, we're going to chat about the work, I guess, that your, the, the nurseries do, the works that Niall and Mark do at the club uh, in a few minutes' time. Um, there is a sad note, of course, uh, th this this weekend, the Senior One Hurling Final uh, taking place this year. Obviously, Jimmy Gray, uh, a legend of Nafina and a legend of Dublin GA, uh, passed away earlier on this year. So there will be a, a sad note, I guess, going into the final this weekend that obviously Jimmy's not there. Yeah, Derek, it's particularly poignant for us to, to head in this year for the first time um, without the great voice of Jimmy behind us in the stand. Uh, but we're pretty sure that Jimmy will be there uh, looking on from above, um, uh, urging everybody to hold the bloody ball as he as he always did. Um, but but indeed, the achievement of our players uh, in, in reaching the final today really has been a credit to Jimmy uh, and to um, Jimmy will be the first man to say, uh, he was just our talisman, but uh, just a representation of all those who have given so much time, so much energy and volunteerism and commitment to the growth of the institution that we have, this remarkable Gaelic community of Nafina here in Mowbray Road. Yeah, we've re we've referenced already the, the the work and that the success, I guess, of the uh, the ladies, obviously, the ladies uh, reaching the county final this year, the Camogie uh, team reaching the, the county final last year. The one club model is obviously something that you, you uh, have taken on board in, at Nafina over the last number of years. And I guess how, how important has that been to see the club grow over the last number of years as well to where it is uh, and the club that we see today on Moby Road? Uh, I think I think the, the issue or the, our, our, um, our focus on the one club model has been hugely important for us. Um, and our recent growth in numbers has primarily been down and primarily driven by the increase in uh, female participation at a juvenile level. So it's been extremely important. But 
again, I suppose in a historical context, um, it, we're, we're very proud here that right back to 1969, that was the time when the, when the club here, when Afina, uh, at the time led by Sean Clerken, um, led really that charge in the idea of, uh, of, of operating on a one club model. And at that time, it wasn't particularly popular uh, um, t- to be ploughing that furrow. Um, but uh, but when our Camogie session was set up in 1969, there was an insistence on the executive that there wouldn't be a separate Camogie club, there would just be uh, Nafina and that uh, members would be, would be treated equally. So we're delighted to see that that's come on such a long way. And indeed, we have some more work to do maybe in that area just to ensure it. But, we'll, uh, but we're, we're, we're grateful to be given that opportunity to it. Um, and at the moment, uh, our biggest challenge is in, in maintaining um, maintaining those numbers and indeed um, uh, supplying enough facilities for all of our players, um, both to play and to engage with club and community uh, and cultural activities. Yeah, and I guess uh, a lot of that falls on Niall Cooper, who's obviously director of coaching at uh, Nafina and uh, Mark Cooper as well as the new GPO. He's got in over the past few weeks at Nafina as well. A huge amount of work that they have on board and trying to uh i guess you know from a from a, a juvenile point of view in terms of uh, engaging with the the youngsters in the area and bringing them into the club from schools and uh going into the schools during the week and obviously uh, working with nurseries uh, uh and juvenile teams at the weekends as well tell me a little bit about the work that they do at the club in terms of engaging with the community i guess which is the big thing and, and trying to uh like i say bring people into the club and and have the club as a vibrant community as it is, as we see at Moby Road at the moment. Um, I think, Derek, uh, again, to go back to that point of privilege, really, we, we we always regard ourselves as being remarkably privileged that we're in this situation where we have such such wonderful coaches uh, and, and men come, who have been, who've come through the process from our own club, from our own uh, from our own nursery of uh, Niall and Mark now, and most recently, uh, Donald, who will be playing on, on Sunday as well. Uh, who was operating this GPO here up until very recently, um, and and it's remarkable in in comparison to other codes and indeed to look to compare ourselves with with international trends. It's remarkable that our most qualified and skilled coaches are not necessarily working with our most senior and our elite teams, but uh, but they're working in the schools and encouraging and working with our young people to uh, encourage their engagement, their healthy engagement in Gaelic games. Um, and Mark and um, and Niall in particular, not only working with um, our juvenile teams, but it, working in up to 13 different schools, uh, national schools around here in the locality. So it's trying to encourage people to engage, to be part of the community, um, but also to try and understand that, that obviously playing um, playing the games is, is, is a central part of what we do. But also the idea of community engagement, of social engagement, of cultural engagement is really, really important for us to... Uh, to try and continue that tradition that we um, that, that Jimmy indeed would have been so proud of, and indeed that the association itself in general um, is 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 uh, so competent at, um, and uh, it's it's particularly pleasing as well to be playing Bally Bowden um, um, this weekend. Uh, uh, I think um, ourselves and Bally Bowden uh, share share common values uh, in relation to uh, both uh, both our playing and our. Um, and our cultural activities. So uh, it's it. We're at a, a a particularly good time, I suppose. Um, a good year where um, where both clubs are are um, a very important and very central in the lives of their uh, of their relevant communities. And uh, I suppose our challenge and our challenge uh, here in the club is to maintain that um, maintain that position and to continue to encourage young people to come and engage in in our indigenous and our native games and and. Uh, and engage with our culture, and uh, and also that they engage in with a sense of volunteerism and um, and and a belief in a sense a sense of community. Yeah, and and you mentioned that because obviously you know you're you're the GA club, Bally Bowden or GA club. We spoke to Chemical Croaks last week. A GA club and GA obviously plays a massive part in that from a from a hurling and football, ladies football, camogie point of view, but. There's a lot of stuff that goes on at the club outside of the, the four codes that we, we might see here in Parnell Park and County final day that goes on in all those clubs that I mentioned and plenty of clubs around the county as well, but in the FINA as well. Talk to me a little bit about the work that goes on there outside again of what we see, the teams that we see here in Parnell Park on uh, over the past few weeks. Plenty of work going on at the club outside of that. 
Yeah, uh, indeed, it, it, it's absolutely wonderful to be focused this week on the elite performance and, and the elite achievement of our of our flagship, uh, of one of our flagship teams. Um, but ultimately, the work of the club goes on on a twenty four seven basis here. So I suppose some of the the uh, the developments that we're particularly proud of is is our own uh, all stars here for those uh, catering for some of our special needs kids in the area uh, on a Saturday morning. Our nursery that's vibrant every Saturday morning with four or five hundred children. Uh, here active and in encouraging the engagement not only of the uh, of the young players but obviously of their parents uh, and to try and um, engage those parents in a sense of of uh, positive civic action and um, and and contribution to their community and also from, from a cultural point of view here on a Thursday night uh, it's always a joy to be uh, to be here in Moby Road uh, to hear our, our musicians congregate to share their tunes um, or, or, or our singers to share their songs or their spoken word. So I think it's a combination of all of that, which uh, which 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 makes all of our clubs, uh, not just Nafina, but all of our GA clubs, so special, so unique, um, and uh, and such an expression of uh, of pride, positive pride in local communities, in local areas, and and indeed in 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 our indigenous culture and heritage. Yeah, and we've spoken already about the uh, the you know the the four codes. I guess we talk about hurling and football, ladies football and camogie, but uh, rounders and handball play a big part in uh, Nafina as well. Yeah, and uh, you know we we found that rounders has been uh, our most recent addition to our playing and on field activities here, uh, and found it great a little bit, uh, uh, and it provides an opportunity um, for people to play um, in in mixed teams cross gender. Uh, and also an opportunity for some of our um, some of our players who are not so who are not so comfortable with the, in the uh, area of physical contact, also to engage and have fun. Also, in some ways, some of our our, our, our rounders engagement is, uh, is is a little bit more focused on the um, social engagement of the players, um, maybe uh, over and above the the, the, the actual elite achievement or, or playing of some of it. For some of our players so it just provides another outlet for people another opportunity for people to congregate and uh, and share some time in each other's company and and i think that's really the focus the same with our handballers here we're very proud of our handball tradition within the within the club where we welcome handballers from all over the country uh, to come and play in our 60 by 30 court here um and again i think that that, that it's it's the games uh, it, and it's our focus it, it they, they just really provide us the opportunity to spend time in each other's company to build those relationships. And I think particularly post COVID, um, really uh, we can't overemphasize the importance of that of spending time in each other's company and and and, uh, and having that human contact. I think it's not only good for our, our physical well-being, for, but for our mental and our social and community well-being as well. So uh, so it's delighted that we're, that we're in a position to be able to offer all of those uh, uh, those opportunities for anybody who comes through that comes through the door here or, or, or lives in the area that they can take part in any range of those activities um, regardless of of age regardless of gender um, or ethnicity that um, they're that we we like to think that they'll always find a welcome here on Moby Road yeah and you mentioned COVID because one of the big things from COVID we saw uh, at a lot of GA clubs around the uh, county was the emergence of coffee shops in clubs or near clubs I know Bua is the coffee shop just right next door to Nafina on Moby Road. And that plays a big part in, in bringing people around. I've been down in Nafina a few times over the past few years. And again, there's a lot of people kind of congregating in, in and around that area. And it brings people to the club, be it uh, Saturday or Sunday morning when it's busy anyway, but be it a Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon when it's maybe not, it should not be, be not so busy, but like some Bua. And I know you have um, experienced Gaelic Games as well going on at the club, uh, the, the, the organization you run as well in Nafina. So there's, a, again, a lot of activity and the likes of Bua and EGG bring a lot of activity to the club, again, no matter what time of the day or week it is. Yeah, and it's great. It's great to, to have the facilities busy. Uh, it's great to have a sense of community and a sense of, of life around, around the place. And I suppose from, from Experience Gaelic Games point of view, uh, it's remarkable. We're very privileged to welcome international visitors from all over the planet uh, here to come and uh, have an introduction to the to the to the unique concept of Gaelic games and also for their opportunity for them to, to play. But uh, I think what's been remarkable on that journey, Derek, is that um, since we've been we've been plowing that furrow since 2009 um, and we've been very uh, um, 
uh, very lucky to have welcomed visitors from all over the world from elite uh, sporting um, uh, athletes uh, to, to just to regular international visitors who are coming to visit our culture. But what's remarkable about it is that uh, for all of those thousands of visitors that have come through our door, um, we've yet to come across one who can point to a, a comparable institution such as the GAA um, for its, its, its uniqueness of its combination of, um, of indigenous games, culture, sport and its inclusive nature and um, so um i think that, that that that's always for us a bit of a a, a healthy reminder uh, not to forget how uh, how lucky and fortunate we are to be standing on the shoulders of giants of those who've gone before us and have provided and spent thousands of hours to of work and energy to uh, to deliver us the facilities that we're lucky enough to enjoy today um, and indeed the organization that uh, that that of the GAA, which is as successful as it is at this current time. Um, and to that as well, we also, we owe a debt of gratitude to all and yourself and all on the county board and many others who work behind the scenes in ensuring that um, that the, op the organization continues to operate at such a, at such a professional level and that days like uh, we're so excited about coming up the next Sunday that, uh, that they don't happen by, uh, somebody says by pixies or fairies. Uh, there's a lot of work goes on behind the scenes to make sure they happen. And uh, we're we're very grateful for that work, and uh, and appreciative of it. No problem at all. Um, thank you. Uh, I know from the point of view of Nafina um, as well, you you have a relationship with uh, your partnership with DCU. Uh, maybe that's one of the aspects that you're looking to, I guess, continue to grow the club because the club is you, you've said it yourself it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're trying to f find facilities, I guess, for for the amount of people that are coming through the club all the time, from the amount of uh, school children coming through the club and, and working at the club. Have you any plans to grow the club or what are you, what are you trying to do to kind of, I guess, keep growing the club and keep, I guess, improving the club as, as uh, years go by? Yeah, I, I suppose that there, there, there are, I suppose, in to us, there are three, uh, uh, you know, major challenges to be faced. Um, uh, the first one is, is maintaining the flame. Um, in other words, passing on the ethos and the, the values that have been, uh, you know, so well set out here since since uh, since the foundation of the club and indeed since the foundation of the GAA. So maintain that ethos is the first bit. The the second bit is uh, is is ensuring that we can maintain as social life changes and the complexity of our life increases. Um, in general, that we can uh, encourage and uh, continue to attract volunteers to. Um, to continue to work to maintain the club and sustain it. Uh, and the third one really is the one that we just, I suppose, uh, the more tangible one is actually playing services and playing fields. And um, that's a really big challenge for us in the area here. We're so close to the city centre and um, there's a, a massive pressure on any open space um, for, for, for purposes other than, the, than, um, than recreation or playing sport or indeed for community purposes. So maintaining that is very difficult. Um, so uh, to, to develop and to, to have developed and to have partner with our, uh, our community partners in DCU, to, have, to work with them for us to have access to their facilities and indeed for our members to have access to, uh, uh, to, the, to DCU itself and, uh, uh, and, and to go and study and, uh, and, and work uh, on campus has been really, really important for us over the last few years. Uh, I suppose if we have one envy, uh, we have a little bit of envy for um, for the work that's the great work that's been done at Ballyboden. They have been extremely successful in securing uh, grounds in, in in their locality, and um, we're under a little bit more pressure than than they are at the moment. Um, but again, in relation to our growth, there's always an issue. We, we don't necessarily strive to grow or to grow numbers, um, but we, we we strive and work very hard um, across uh, all of the club. To ensure that we can uh, provide an environment that's uh, healthy and positive for the children of our particular area of of this area of our catchment area in the drum contra glass nevin area and um, so there's a limited amount of people always within this area but we wish to, to provide our, our 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 aspiration is to provide an opportunity for everybody in the area to come and take part and enjoy um in whatever uh, in club life in whatever guise that, that may happen, whether whether it should be at the elite level as our senior horrors will, will represent us and carry our hopes and dreams on Sunday, or whether it's uh, you know our all stars who will be here on Saturday, or whether it's 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 our musicians who come on a Thursday night, uh, or it's our administrators and, and and our volunteers who spend hours.
numbers of apps in the organization in the uh, in the detail of organizing our facilities managing our fixtures um and, and, and an endless amount of activity that goes on in in, in that area uh, on a volunteer basis so um so i, I think we're, we're certainly not be sure as challenges but we're 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 remarkably looking forward to the great challenge of sunday uh, and um and, and of our fixture in parnell park and and it you know that's going to be prefaced for a, by a very uh, another very important fixture when our minor camogues will take uh will take the field also remarkably against bally bowden as the two clubs will do a battle for the uh, minor camogie title uh, this sunday at half past 10 to at blanchardstown so uh, so a great day is in store um and and I suppose there, there, there there's one little, little bit which I, I on reflection before we we sat down to have a chat about this I thought was a, a nice story to tell you is that you know when our our team um take to the park uh, to Parnell Park on on Sunday they'll be led by our management team which is led by Neil O'Callaghan and um, uh, it's remarkable it's uh, in in the sense that um, Neil as a as a lifelong club member here. Um, his father, Colin McCallicon Sr., was uh, one of the main movers in the establishment of our nursery here. So if there's ever a point to, to illustrate just how much work, how many years of uh, volunteerism and commitment have gone into the uh, delivery of, of, of the event and, and of, of, of the excitement for the game on Sunday, I think that tells a story that, uh, that Colin McCallicon Sr. will be um, away in Asia, um, online, um, and as passionate as everybody else from the club here, uh, been watching into Parnell Park um, to see how, how how we progress as Colm or as Neil, uh, his son manages the team, and two mm-hmm. of his other brothers, uh, Colm and Al, um, will be involved in the background team. So, so it just gives a flavour and indication of the level of commitment and the effect that I suppose that all of this, um, all of what we do collectively has uh, is such a passion for for all of us and hopefully as uh, it uh, delivers positive benefits for us all and, and a greater sense of community and feeling and we look forward to that and uh, we hope it's going to go really really well on sunday that's a lovely note to end it on that uh, cormac thank you very much for uh, chatting today uh looks for, looking forward to a really a good game this weekend but no matter what happens this weekend i mean the the, the you can clearly see that the uh, nafina is growing and growing and the future is very bright for nafina over the next over the coming years so best of luck with everything both this weekend and going forward as well got a milmog derek thanks to me for having us on and thank you again not for all the county board Cormac O'Donoghue, the chairman of nafina there and that's all we have time for this week a quick reminder of the fixtures for this week before we go in the go ahead intermediate hurling uh, final it's Fingalians versus St Vincent's this Saturday afternoon at Parnell Park at four o'clock throw in for that at 3.45 in O'Toole Park on Saturday it's Nave Marnog versus Rohini in the go ahead senior three hurling final and the big one is the go ahead senior one hurling final on Sunday at Parnell Park throw in for that one at 25 past four Uh, in Parnell Park on Sunday afternoon. The go-ahead Senior 2 hurling final has been postponed due to the uh, bad weather uh, at the moment. That'll now take place on Sunday, 5th of November at Parnell Park with a half-past two throw-in for that. And one fixture in the football championship uh, this weekend, uh, the Junior 1 football final, a big one. It's uh, O'Dwyers versus Man of War on Sunday afternoon, 29th of October in the Knoll. Uh, with throw-in at 11 a.m. Match tickets are available on dublinga.ie. And if you can't make it to Parnell Park this Sunday, the go-ahead Senior 1 hurling final between Ballyboden, St. Enders and Athena will be shown live on RT2 from 20 past 4. Wherever you're going to be watching it, we hope you enjoy the game. Thanks for joining us.